see tonight. Um, I've been talking this last four weeks, five weeks, about St. Wash, right, apostles. And at the end of the day, church today, they will not come out and say this, but don't really believe in that story. But, um, I said last week that about the gospel for Lord Jesus Christ. And I just want to show you there's two or three things here in the Bible. And the Bible teaches the mysteries. Right? What is the mysteries? I'll always show you this. If you look up, I'm not going up the vines here. The New Testament, it notes not the mystery, but that which went outside the range of honest sick unassisted natural apprehension can be made known only by divine revelation. So the mysteries in the Bible can only be made by divine revelation. Okay? And is made known in a manner at an appointed time by God to those only who are illuminated by his spirit. Now, first of all tonight, I would like to show you a wee couple of things about grace. Now listen, we in the body of Christ are now in Christ. How do you get into Christ? Well, listen, right. If you talk to a lot of people about the church this day, they would tell you a lot of things in a lot of ways of gospel, different things. One of them, one of them you'll not very hear very much is this. Would you like Jesus? Would you like Jesus? And there's a certain man in the church, and that's he is on the website. At eight years of old, eight years of age, I was asked to write Jesus. So he's preaching and all, and that's what he says. He like wanted Jesus to see Jesus. Well, really, at the end of the day, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and the gospel of grace doesn't tell you to come to Christ that way. But see this here. If you see this here, the mysteries of God. Okay. And I know you ever studied this one. But if you look into the Divines the mystery there, you read all things. Now, I want to show you a couple of things from Scripture. Right? I'll read this again. The mysteries in the New Testament are outside the range of unassisted natural apprehension. They can't be understood by your intellect. What can they not be understood by? And it must be from divine revelation that the Spirit of God gives you to reveal this thing. Does that make sense then? Right. See the first one. And um, this is quite deep, but there's a reason for saying it's said Matthew 13, verse 11. Matthew 13, verse 11. Please look, if you have your Bible, please look at this verse. Right. Jesus comes along, and if you read this, in verse 1, it's, uh, verse 2, it's, and great multitude were gathered together so that he went unto a ship and sat. And the whole multitude stood on the shore and spake these things unto him in parables. Okay. And verse 10 says, And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest them unto parables? And he said, And, and he answered and said unto him, them, the disciples, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it's not given. So Israel and the people there could not receive the mysteries of the kingdom. And Jesus came along and started to preach the kingdom. But if you read that again, it's, it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Right? And to them it is not given. Now this is going to be sort of maybe, think, you think it's over your head tonight, but we see the next verse. For whosoever hath to him shall be given. That's the next thing he says. And he shall have more than abundance, but whosoever hath not to him shall be taken away from that what he hath. What's the tone? Mistress. Well, right. Therefore, speak I to them in parables. Okay. 
And then you read on down a bit, but this paper's hard as wax. Can I ask you a question? Can we receive the, key, the t- teaching of the kingdom, mistress? Yeah. So if your heart's not right, you can't receive it. I mean, this is going on. But this is Friday night. Talk things out. Be better. Right. I want to read the Amplified. This is not just the way we do it on Sunday morning things. Uh, Matthew 13, verse 11 to 13. Matthew 13, Amplified, 11 to 13. See, every one of us would like to think we're following and doing and believing everything the way it's meant to be. Matthew 13, verse 11. And this is, this is not meant to be controversial. But I just want to read this. Matthew 13, verse 11. Amplified. And he replied to them, To you it has been given to know the secrets and mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For whosoever, so, for whosoever has spiritual knowledge, to him will more be given. He's talking here about knowing the mysteries of the kingdom and you getting and receiving revelation knowledge. And if you walk in that when you're taught, then you get more revelation knowledge. This is so foreign. This in the body of Christ. That these verses sin. But here's the key in this, and this what whosoever has spiritual knowledge to him will be given more be given. And he will he will be furnished richly so that we will have abundance. And from him who is not eaten that which will be taken from him. Now listen, I've started a real burden here about the kingdom of heaven. So Jesus came along and started talking the kingdom. Now I'll ask you a question. Okay then. What is what is a mystery? Mm-hmm. It's a hidden I'll go over it again. In the New Testament, it notes not the mysterious, but that which has been outside the range of unassisted natural apprehension. Uh, if anybody wants to um, try and bring their mindset to that, unassisted natural apprehension, what does that mean? No, I wouldn't know what that You'd hear it from the Spirit. That wouldn't be. If, from what is unassisted natural apprehension? What does that mean? That's not from yourself. You can't work this up in your own mindset or knowledge. Yeah. And all I'm just saying to you is, nah, this is very hard to bring across. You better believe it. But listen, what is the gospel? Now listen, everybody else, hear you this. At eight years of age, this man turned in and says, would you like Jesus? Somebody said, it's this young boy. And he says, I would like Jesus. And is that the gospel? Now last these this man, who's a pastor now, is teaching me. Now I remember going to Belfast, to a Billy Graham meeting years ago when I was a young person at 12 or 13 years of age. And this was it. Come down and sign this paper and you can see it. You can't understand this is what's going on here. Now I want to tell you this. It seems to be I'm going to read a verse. First Ephesians chapter 6. I really just want to really highlight it. So, so the mystery, one is the mystery of the kingdom here, John. Mystery. Mystery. Mystery of the kingdom. Can I tell you this? The kingdom's a mystery. The kingdom of heaven is a mystery. And it's hidden. Unless God reveals us. So in the sense here now. Now here's, another, here's this other mystery. The mystery, and I'm going to read in Ephesians 6. That's, that's uh, Matthew 13, 13, verse 11 to 13, amplified. Right, mystery of, and it's really this one I want to focus on tonight. I'm going to go back to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 8, 19. As for me, that utterance may be given unto me 
that I may open my mouth and make known the mystery of the gospel. What does that mean? So, the gospel of grace for the dispensation of grace is a mystery which is different than the gospel of the circumcision. Oh, but has that dropped in? Has that dropped into your spirit? So in other words, unless God reveals the revelation of the mystery of the gospel of grace, we'll not know it. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, has that dropped in your It's a mystery. What is a mystery? Something that has not been revealed and cannot be worked up by your intellect or mindset, but must be revealed by divine revelation. Do you mean to say the gospel must be revealed by the being? Yes. It's the mystery of the gospel. And then when you come and start to preach the gospel of the grace of God in this dispensation, people can't understand it. Because it's a mystery. Do you hear there? Go read this up for us. Mystery of the gospel. What's, what's, what's this gospel? What's the gospel? Well, I'll just wait. I'll just get this verse or I'll um, stay here. Ephesians 6, verse 19. To make known unto you the mystery of the gospel. So what is a mystery? It's a hidden. Yeah. And not access, accessible by your own mindset or intellect or somebody else's, but must come by revelation. On the go this gospel, in other places, it's the gospel of Christ. And it's the gospel of grace. Now, most, not everywhere is preaching the mystery of the gospel of Christ and the mystery of the gospel of grace. And I hope this is not But that's why people can't see or understand the gospel of the grace of God in this dispensation, because this is a mystery. Tell me this, can I ask you a question? Is that the, I want to this up, just to get some of this. Ephesians 6, verse 19. Go and read this yourself. See, right, okay. See when I'm there, just, I'm going to write up a number Romans, 1, verse 16. Please look at the Bible just to see this. See, when I come and preach, you need to believe and call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's a mystery because it has not been revealed before. Right. Okay, Ephesians, Romans 1, verse 16. For I am not ashamed of, of the gospel of Christ. So this gospel, the gospel is the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe it, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed. When you preach the mystery of the gospel of the dispensation of grace, you preach Christ. And then you preach and give the revelation Therein is, the, therein is the righteousness of God revealed. These other gospels never reveal the righteousness of God to be. And all I'm just saying to you is what people need to do is sit down and read them verses and see what them verses are saying. And start to get, that's why there's people struggling with Assurance of salvation. They've never got the revelation of justification by the mystery of the gospel of Christ. For there God justifies the sinner and declares them righteous. Isaiah 32, verse 17, Romans 5, verse 1. I'll read this again. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. This is the mystery of God, the gospel. 
I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto such to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also the Greek, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed. Romans 5 verse 1, Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God. So God justifies the sinner and declares them righteous and presents them now in Christ. This is the mystery of the gospel. Listen, see that word Christ there. Now, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Okay then. Right. See when we're there. If you go to Acts 20, verse 24. But none of these things move me, neither can I myself fly dear unto me, so that I may finish my course with joy and the ministry which I received of the Lord to testify of the gospel of the grace of God. So the mystery of gospel is this, to testify of the grace of God. You see, it says there. Mm -hmm. 16, 17. Acts 20, 20, verse 24, I think it's there. So once the gospel of the grace of God, a missile gospel, a gospel of Christ, the gospel of Christ, okay. Therein is the righteousness. It's a big one. Righteousness of God revealed. Now that's told Romans one, verse sixteen and seventeen, and the gospel of the grace of God. It's talking about now there are, this is all to do with the mystery of the gospel and you must hear if you go to second Timothy 1 verse 10 second Timothy 1 now listen you need to read these and read them and read them to you understand second Timothy 1 verse 9 and 10 who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own works and grace, which was given us in Christ before the world began, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death. The mystery of the gospel, the gospel of Christ and the gospel of grace, death has been abolished. They're justified. Death has been abolished. What's this wee bit? And it brought life and immortality to life through the gospel. What does that mean? The believer in Christ will never see death. And that's what we should be preaching. Second Timothy. This is the good mystery of the gospel. Second Timothy 1 verse 9 and 10. Abolish death. And brought life. On brought life. Life and immortality. In other words, your spirit has been reborn again. Your spirit's going to forever. All by the gospel, the mystery of this gospel, the gospel of grace and the gospel of Christ. And see these i.e. other gospels, they do not not produce this. And when we say, oh, well, I get saved, so and so again, but could I ask you a question? Well, I don't want to hurt anybody or anything. Have, have you know, have you received the gospel of the grace of God? And the gospel of Christ. 
because the revelation, I said, you will listen to us here. The God, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed. And what of the gospel of grace? Well, listen, God has therefore been justified by faith. We have peace with God. And then it says, the next verse, it says, Romans 5, verse 1 and 2. Romans 5, verse 1 and 2. My Ephesians. Uh -huh. Right, okay. Romans 5, verse 1 and 2. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, not Jesus. By him also we have access by faith into this grace from that we stand. The gospel, the mystery of the gospel brings us that God has brought you in and now you're standing in all the grace of God. Justified, declared righteous. For some days, it's maybe never heard of us. Hebrews 12, verse 23. The spirits of just men are one way perfect. Now this is the gospel. The mystery of the gospel. It's the mystery of Christ. And you must hear no honesty. The mystery of Christ was never ever revealed until the horses of the church. And that's why they're coming and preaching the mystery of the gospel. Because they get a revelation of the mystery of Christ. That's really a verse. Uh, go you to Ephesians chapter 3. And that's why there's so many different messages and so many different things. Well, unless this mystery is revealed to us, we'll not know these things that this reveals. Ephesians chapter 3. I'm just giving, a, giving an overview on this tonight. I, I talk to you about the kingdom of heaven now. That's a mystery. Well, you, you go to a lot of theologian teachers and they they just see the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven as the same thing and they're all talking the same thing. But it seems to be the mystery of the kingdom of heaven is so different. That's a different way of living. Jesus came and started to teach kingdom. Different than the law and the Old Testament. And he taught how to live kingdom living. Matthew 6 and 7. The Jews could not receive this. Because they couldn't receive. Remember I told you I read in the parable of the sower. Unto us, unto you it's given to understand the mysteries. Unto them, that's revealed in parables, and they can't see it. They can't see it, because they've read it yet. And what is it? Mark, um, where does it say it? Well, Ephesians chapter 3. Right. Paul comes along here, and he says this in verse 2. If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given to me to work for you. So Paul's saying, there's been a dispensation of grace given to me. A stewardship of grace with an apostolic gift to reveal to you the mysteries. Okay. What was Paul given? An apostolic gift of grace, excuse me, to reveal the mysteries, which were not revealed before. Is that only a sense there? Now, I want you, could, you, could you look at this verse for me? Verse 3, Ephesians 3, verse 3. How that by revelation he made known not to me the mystery. How did you do it? Did Paul get this in his uncle? No. See that? How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote before in few words, whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge, in the mystery of Christ. So God by revelation. Revealed a revelation of Christ. To Paul. Paul comes along. And reveals that revelation. That he has been given. To others. 
First not for him, it's for others. Could I read the next verse? Which in other ages was not made known. This mystery of Christ was never ever revealed before. Only at this moment to Paul. So how can you preach the mystery of the gospel if you don't know the mystery of Christ? Because listen, it's the gospel of Christ. And it's the gospel of grace. Do you see what these mysteries do? These mysteries show to us that the stuff that we have grounded ourselves on through church life and different things and established, i.e. churches and things, it's not on the mysteries. And I'm just, right, oh shit, which in other ages was not made known. Look your Bible, please. Look, please, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 5, which in other ages was not made known. I could say this again, which in other ages was not made, this was not made known. The mystery of Christ was not made known. Listen. As it is now revealed unto the holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Now that's talking about the apostles of the church. Now the mystery of Christ was not made known. Only now it's revealed to Paul on the church apostles. About the mystery of Christ. See, Christ's a mystery. Yeah. And it's a hidden. Now listen, if you want to, there's at least 11 mysteries in the Bible. At least 11. Now, when you come along and preach, call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's a mystery. That is a mystery. And everybody thinks you're preaching the wrong thing. Now, listen. For the sake of Sunday, maybe maybe it should be only get on to this one. What's this? There's, a, there's, 11, there's 11 mysteries. And you need the Spirit to reveal them to you, them mysteries. Or somebody that the Spirit has revealed them to for the Greeks can explain it to you. And that's called an apostolic gift of grace given to expound to the body of Christ. Okay, something sounds sense Mm -hmm. Right? Now, see if you read on down in Ephesians chapter 3. I'll read it again. Which in other ages was not made known. Can I ask any of the question? Was this ever made known? No. Right? As it is now revealed on the holy apostles and the prophets by the Spirit that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of the promise in Christ by the gospel. The Jews and the Gentiles are made partakers of the promise in Christ by the gospel. What gospel? The gospel of Christ. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God. Now, you need to know a revelation of the mystery of Christ. It preach the mystery of the gospel. Now, you see this on down a bit. Wherein I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God. How is Paul made a minister? By the gift of the grace of God. He wasn't made a minister by select best presbytery. This, this is talking of a, a sent one with an apostolic gift. But he's made a, I'll read it again, wherefore he's made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me. So there was a gift. A gift of grace given unto Paul to go and preach and reveal the mysteries God revealed him. And the apostolic teaching of the church was meant to do this. Right. I read it again. Wherefore I have made a minister according to the gift of the grace given unto me by the effectual working of his power. So the grace of God and the power of God starts to work and say him. But it's the grace of God was doing it wasn't Paul. Right. Unto me, whom I am, who I, who I'm sorry for, I'm hoping 
Ble, ble reina ni. Han buka sa to. Ble. Ble no shimo de pe pe sa. Pe sa ni de pe sa. Pe sa ni. On to me, who unless I'm the least of all the sins, is this grace given? That I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Because God, by revelation, revealed to him the mystery of Christ. And then he started to try and preach the unsearchable riches of Christ. That's the Spirit revealed to him. Right. And if you don't leave it farther, What's the time here? And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. Here we are, look to it. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world have been hidden God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. That's hidden. The fellowship of the mystery, that God created all things by Jesus Christ. That's God coming and revealing the deity of Jesus. And this was a mystery. Not read it there. And we all may see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. And unless the Spirit of God gives you revelation to reveal all the deity of who the Lord Jesus Christ is, you will get the intellect and you'll read all the people's intellects and see what they think. But you may not be true revelation of the mystery. It doesn't say that. You may all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world has been hidden God. This is all about Christ is hidden. But it's a mystery. Now God's shown it to people in the body of Christ to reveal the mystery of Christ. And for them to come into the fellowship. To make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. Come into fellowship with the mystery of Christ. You must hear. You can read this in your life. Next verse. Unto the intent that now unto the principalities and power and heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. Read that again. To the intent that now Unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places. In the second half, principalities and powers would know. What's this? In heavenly places may be known by the church. The manifold wisdom of God. God wants the church to know that now the church can know the manifold wisdom of God. Not that word manifold means the many side, the many side you read the side words, many side it was. I mean, listen, I remember years ago looking at all that stuff. But you see, yesterday, this whole thing came together for me. This, these mysteries are all hidden. And unless God reveals this, you and I will preach all this. And we'll, that over, the, over the years, that's what's happened. All these people have been preaching different times. But it hasn't been the mysteries. Listen, I am saying nothing. To the intent that now unto the principalities and power in heaven might be known by the church. What's God want the church to know? The manifold wisdom of God. Could I tell you this? The wisdom of God's in this. This word, could I tell you this? This word has been led by the spirit of the word and the wisdom of the word. God meant the church to be led by the Spirit of God and the wisdom of God. But it's a mystery. And the secret of this whole thing is, is get the revelation of the mystery of Christ. And then you can preach the mystery of the gospel. If you have that revelation, I'm just going to write the mystery of Christ. I don't know how I brought that. I used to know it didn't do very well. Ministry of Christ. Ministry of Christ. That was Ephesians chapter 3, verse 4 and 5. Maybe. And then I read another bit on to have fellowship.
Makes you very good, that's just what I say there now. To have fellowship of the mystery. The mystery of Christ, to have fellowship of the mystery with Christ, the mystery of the mystery. Fellowship of the mystery. Christ. That's Ephesians 3. I hope I'm not saying this away above our heads, please. So here we get mysteries to the kingdom. Just touch uh, mysteries of the gospel. The mystery of Christ, three. That ties into the fellowship mystery of Christ. See verse 10. The intent was God created all things by Jesus Christ. The intent that now under the principalities of power and every place may be known by the church the manful wisdom. Of God. So here's the key. God doesn't want us to be led by the wisdom of this world. By the spirit of this world. But be led by the spirit of God and the wisdom of God. And when you come and start to speak wisdom of God, revelations, people don't know it. People don't understand it. And they think you're wrong. It's the only sense then. Now, I've been preaching the mystery of the gospel for years, and I didn't really know and understand it until yesterday. My goodness, I've been preaching this for years. You know, as I keep saying different other things. No. You know what it says? The mystery of Christ. Okay. Go to First Corinthians verse 15. I would love you to take them, read these verses out, and write them out and look at them. And just to see it. And see when you write these out, could I tell you there'll be something drop inside your spirit for your heart soap. And you will start to see the mystery of the gospel of Christ. Please see this. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached. So this is a this is a gospel that Paul preached. Moreover, and brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached. He's not talking about a whole pile of other gospels out there. He's talking about the gospel he preached. I read it again. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you, you received, and were in your stand. So these people received the gospel of Paul Priest, and we were standing on the gospel. We hear this. By which you are saved if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believe in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, but which I also received, how Christ died for our sins. Not, would you like Jesus? That's the preaching. Would you like Jesus? That's the saying that. I delivered unto you, first of all, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and he was seen of Cephas at twelve. There's the gospel. I delivered unto you, first from church, how Christ died for my sins, and he was buried and he rose again. This is the gospel of Christ. Okay. Now, if you go to Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13, we are bound to give we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, for God has from the beginning chosen you for salvation through sanctification, spirit, and belief of the truth. Whereunto he called you by our gospel. God, Paul saying here, God calls sinners by his gospel. The Gospel of Christ. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. We are bound to give thanks always to God, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God has from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and believe the truth. Whereunto you call you by our gospel. Paul's not saying he's, pre- he's calling you by all that other stuff. Everybody else is preaching. To the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, most people. Will switch off when they read that. So here's the never mind you receive the righteousness of God, and God has justified you to pull his death. You now have received the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
when he called you. Now we see the next verse. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the tradition we have been taught by word or epistle. Stand fast and hold these things. No, we stand and we accept everything else that everybody else is saying. It's not saying that. Stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or by word of business. Stand fast and hold this stuff on time. Now listen. I don't know what you think of this in but listen to this here. God reveals kingdom mysteries. And God's looking men and women who will be faithful stewards of the kingdom mysteries. And your heart needs to come to a stage where that's right. So you could realize, oh, this stuff. Where do you get that? First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. I, I've been telling you four or five weeks, God sent different people and going to Christ at different times, different dispensations. And Paul was sent, Acts 13, along with Barnabas. And Paul was sent to preach by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God. I sent one as one sent with a, and I've read it, with a dispensation of grace to go forth and speak and hold on to the mysteries that the Spirit of God reveals and tell the people. First Corinthians 4 verse 1. So let, let a man at show account of us as the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries. What is, what is the minister of Christ? The stewards of mis the mysteries. And what are they to do? Whenever they sh get shown the message, they go and preach the message. Because they're going to be held accountable for telling the body of Christ. Where do you get that? Okay. I'm just, just seeing you there. Just tie these verses down. Hebrews 13, verse 17. Yes, tonight I'm just here trying to give you a preview of what the mysteries. Hebrews, uh, there's a perfect depth in all this. And I hope I'm not saying anything to offend them. Hebrews 13, verse 7. Obey then, I rule over you, and submit yourselves by the watch for your soul, as they must give an account. The stewards of God must give an account. Did they stand up and preach the mysteries? And not only. To God's people. If you read and read already Ephesians chapter 3, verse 2. If you heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given to me, Paul says, for you. So, this dispensation of grace, a stewardship of grace to preach the mysteries. Is given to Paul for the preach to the rest of the body of Christ. And he will he will have to give an account someday. And it's the mysteries that the church needs to know. For he preached the mysteries and stand the world in the truth of the mysteries. Wait, shall we ask now? Go you to Colossians 1 verse 25. Paul says this, Wherefore I was made a minister according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you. So Paul was made sent with an apostolic gift of grace and an apostolic gift to go and preach the body of Christ. And it wasn't for him, it was for the body of Christ. What for? For the body of Christ to fulfill the word of God. And I'll ask you the question, how are you going to fulfill the word of God tonight? If you do not come in contact with one who has been sent with an apostolic gift to edify you. See when you're there. What's this be about verse? Right. Wherefore I have made a minister say a read there. Even the mystery which has been hid from ages, from generations, but now has been manifested since, whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Christ in you. No, the Holy Spirit lives in me. 
You'll all go to Christ and tell you what's for Well, listen, here's the mystery, the revelation of Christ in it. But it's a mystery. And when you come along, people think, what's he saying? What's he doing? Listen, you need a revelation of the mystery of Christ. But he's coming to live in you. If we shake our head, the rest of the body of Christ does not see that. Because the mystery is hidden. You see what going from You see what a mystery is? What is a mystery? It's hidden. And it needs revealing. But it only can be revealed by those who get a revelation in the grace and dispensation to reveal us. Tell me sense there. Right, watch this. I'm going to go a wee bit further. Right. Go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. I'm oh, sorry, 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. Paul says this in verse 10. Night and day praying exceedingly that we might see your face and might perfect that which is like your faith. Paul knew that he had an apostolic gift to perfect other believers so that they walk in their faith because they were like this. But that was the apostolic gift. Now God himself and our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way to you. And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one towards another and towards all men, even so you towards you to the end, that he may that he, that he may establish your hearts on them and holiness. That's what God wants to do. Bring this gift so that it would bring that result in the believer's lives. But listen, this is a mystery. And these gifts of the apostolic are a mystery. And the body of Christ won't receive. And this, excuse me, I only tapped on one or two things. Remember to, to talking about wisdom? Yes. Right. Wisdom, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 10. To the intent that now under the principalities and powers of heaven might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. We, the church, most of are led by the spirit of the word and the wisdom. But God wants to be led by the spirit of God and the wisdom of God. Now, if you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, now, what are we on here? Mystery. Of the wisdom of God. Number four. Yeah. Where's Corinthians? Chapter two. First, maybe. Maybe it's five or six. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. First Corinthians chapter 2. Are you ready? We'll read verse 1. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with echoes of speech or of wisdom declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness and fear and much trembling. And my speech and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. But in demonstration of the spirit and power, that your faith should stand in the wisdom, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect or mature, yet the not the wisdom of this world, nor of the prince of this world, come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. See? The revelation of the wisdom of God. And when God gives you revelation, what's this one we'll see here? The body of Christ tells you to make proclamations. I never you ever know that before. Make, declare proclamations. That's what men tell you. We hear this. God wants you to get revelation knowledge, whether from directly from him or directly from someone who's walking in revelation knowledge. 
And when you get that direct, that revelation knowledge, that revelation knowledge reviews your mind. And what you, what new revelation that comes into your mind, you speak when you're speaking the wisdom of God. Now let's go try and read these verses. How be it we speak the wisdom of men among them are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the prince of this world that come to know. We speak the wisdom of God in the mystery, even the hidden wisdom. The wisdom of God is hidden. It's a mystery. So God must reveal it. He was all wrong for you. And I read in Ephesians 3, verse 10, that the God of this world had this intent that Christ would come and you fellowship with Christ, that you would, through the church, reveal the wisdom of God to principalities and power. I'm speaking maybe a lot of stuff and they don't mean to go over the top too much. What's the next wee verse? I remember years ago in the Gospel Paul, and this wee man rose up, and he read this verse, and he says, I has not seen nor enter into the heart of the things that God has prepared for us, whereas I can't even wait to get to heaven. I can't even wait to get to heaven and see what God's prepared for us. I come home and I says to the Lord, come up the car. Imagine, imagine revealing things, hiding things from us. Why do you not reveal to him? Why do you not reveal to us now? I can come and I read the bed. Right, what's this? I read verse 7 now. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden, hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world for our glory. We speak the wisdom of God. I hear in a mystery. When you speak the wisdom of God and speak God's revelation, it's a mystery everyone listening to. What's he talking about? But here's the key. What I'm trying to say to you is next verse, I'm going to read. Which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known, they would never crucify the Lord. Prince of Pilate, first, does not know the wisdom of God. But as written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor entered the heart of man the things that God prepared for them at all. And we hear this now with God, Lord, why would you do that? And then I read the moment I read the verse. But God has revealed them unto us by the Spirit. What do you mean to say you have revealed these unto us by the Spirit? Yes. I don't need to wait to get there. Wait to heaven and say, thank God. God's already prepared them for me. And he wants to reveal them with their mysteries. It's the only sense Read the Read these verses. Read this. For what man knows the things of man save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the Word, but the Spirit which is of God, that we may know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things we also speak. Remember, I told you, make them proclamations. But when God reveals to you what you have, and you start to speak from your heart and head, by revelation knowledge, what God says you are, that's what God wants you to do. Speak from the revelation that God shows you. We assure you that. And you say, I'm in Christ. I'm not in all. I'm in the kingdom. I'm blessed with all spiritual blessings because that's what God has revealed through the word. I know us here, a lot of people have this sheet of paper out, they're reading it every day. It's the revelation of the thing. What you know, and speaking what you know by revelation, because God has revealed this to you, is not one. And church, church will always come up with a thing called pseudo, another way of it, instead of the genuine way. But we to try and read this first. Now, listen, I'm going to try and read this out then. Maybe a lot of people don't like to read like that. Maybe. Please, yes. Years ago, I was in the house, it's half eight now. Years ago, I was in the house. I went to bed and I'd been thinking very little. I woke up at half four in the morning and I had an NIV Bible sitting across from bed. I opened it and the car started me if I was in bed. The next thing, I opened it, shower door, I got a light on, and I opened my Bible and so I read. And you talk about a light bulb, you know. First Corinthians chapter two, verse 11 and 12. 
but only ten. But God has revealed it to us by his Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who among men know the thoughts of a man except the man's spirit within him? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. We have not received the Spirit of word, but the Spirit who is from God, that we may understand what God has freely given us. Us. This is what we speak. Not in words taught by human wisdom, but in words taught by the Spirit. Expect expressing spiritual truths in spiritual words. So the spiritual revelation of the truths of God, you speak, you see it, and by revelation, an automatic, once you get that in your mind, you speak it out. So you're speaking revelation. But the revelation is coming from the enlightenment of the Spirit of God and the wisdom of God. It's only sense. If you go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. And that's what everybody's, you know, they all do. He is, speak these forth, these declarations, or, or whatever they call them, different words. We hear this verse. What we believe we speak. Not a sheet of paper. When you get that revelation, and you speak the revelation. And I tell you, yes, that's you starting to help you. Welcome to the wisdom of God. Spiritual truths with spiritual words. The spiritual truths, the spirit reveals you. And you start to speak spiritual words. It's not you operating or doing anything. It's the spirit of God in you operating. And the problem is today, we're listening to too many stuff for their own sins. And this is all hidden. The mysteries. Second Corinthians 4 verse 13 AB. We have the same spirit of faith. This is the spirit of faith in action. As we believed, as I believed, therefore I spoke them. We also believe, therefore speak. I told you a couple of them, I'm in the spirit. I'm in the kingdom. I'm in Christ. I'm blessed with him. And you start to see these spirits of truth, the wisdom of God. Is living in me. Father, you're revealing the mystery of Christ to me. And I speak it forth. Father, you're revealing the mystery of the fellowship of the mystery of Christ. Father, you're revealing to me the mystery of the kingdom of heaven. And as you start to walk in these truths where God's showing you, God will give you more revelation. That's Matthew 13 now. <clears throat> right. So for some of them, maybe never seen these verses before. Go you to Mark 4. There's, there's now at least seven more mysteries. But I'm going to leave you hungry. I'm just going to finish up these ones. Uh, go you to Mark 4. So God shows you, and you start to walk in the laws, and you start to speak the truth that God shows you. That makes sense here. That's is, this is where you, even people see this, people stop. I oh, wouldn't need to say that in front of people. But then you're not wanting to walk with God's wisdom. You want to walk with everybody else's game. You don't want to stop like stick out. No. Mark 4, verse 24. Pay close attention, New Leaven. No, not New Leaven. Yeah, New Leaven. Pay close attention to what you hear. The closer you listen, the more understanding you have. What the AV says there, take heed to what you hear. So God starts to reveal things to you, or somebody comes along and starts speaking some revelation to you. Are you taking heed yet? Are you taking heed yet? What does it mean to heed? What sense? Are you taking heed to what you hear? Are you listening to the wrong stuff? Take heed to what you hear. It's the stuff you're listening to, the wrong stuff. Well, you need a revelation to go back and stop listening to that. Mark 4, verse 24. There's five take heeds, and I want to finish here. 
The first one is Mark 4, verse 24. Heavy. Take heed to what you hear. With, with what measure you use it, measure you. Listen. Most people today will never be able to walk in the mysteries because they're listening to the wrong stuff. And they won't stop. That's just what I would say. More, uh, New Levin says, pay close attention to what you hear. The closer the le- you listen, the more understanding you'll be given, and you'll receive even more. That's the mystery of the kingdom of heaven. Listen, <coughs> I'm going, I'll take you back to it. Then he said, pay close att- attention to what you hear. The closer you listen, the more understanding you'll be given, and you'll receive even more. To those who don't listen to my teaching, more understanding to those who listen to my teaching, more understanding be given. But to those who do not listen, even the little understanding I'll take away. This is a this is a principal rule in the kingdom. Let me sense that. Now if you go to Luke 8, Luke 8. See, here's where most people think. I wonder what so and so says of this. I wonder what this commentator or this Greek scholar says. What the Spirit said to you? What the Spirit reveals? Just walk on it. Look at it. Look at it. Verse 18. Take heed, therefore, how you hear. First one is take heed to what you hear. Take heed to how you hear. God's revealing divine revel, divine trust to you. Are you paying attention to it? New Levin says, pay close attention to what you hear. The closer you listen, the more understanding you get. But listen to this here. Well, I wouldn't like to stop listening to this other stuff. Then I'll tell you, I don't know what I'm doing. Because that's the principle of the game. Okay, that, that verse there is tied into Matthew 13. Matthew 13, I read earlier on, I don't know what I'm talking about, five. Matthew 13, verse 11. Now listen, read these verses, look them out, and look at it, and look at it, and look at it. And it's only possible for the one with a good heart walking in the revelation of the message. See that? Matthew 13, that's for everyone. But we're listening to the wrong stuff, the whole kind of business. Uh, Matthew 13, verse 11. You have to build your house upon the rock and build it upon the great stuff. Matthew 13, verse 11. Right. I read it earlier on. And he replied to them, To you has been given to know the secrets and mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it has not been given. For whoever has spiritual knowledge, and I told you in order to listen to him, spiritual knowledge, to whoever has spiritual knowledge, to him will more be given. So if God starts to reveal to you spiritual truth, and you walk in that, God will give you more understanding of And listen, to him, to him will be more be given, and he will be furnished richly, so he will have runs. But from him who is not, even what he has been given, even God gives you a wee bit, and you don't walk in it. God will take away from you. And you'll walk, and you'll follow the wisdom of the word, and the wisdom, the wisdom of the wisdom of this word, and the wisdom, the spirit of this word. But you'll not be following the spirit of God. You'll be following instead of the wisdom of God. And that's what I want you. Listen. As we first sang some of them verses in the parable, so is this. Prophets of old were crying for God to reveal to them his message. And they weren't revealed. But these mysteries were revealed to Paul for the church. I read it wrong. Had. And I've only touched one or two or three of them. Four of them. And God wants every one of us to operate in the mystery of the wisdom of God. And that was also Ephesians 3, verse 10. To fellowship in the mystery of Christ and to walk in wisdom. 
and see when you take that paper. I think there's some more. But listen, I have been teaching, I've been teaching that for you. You know, the mistress, I didn't realise the word was a mistress. I don't remember, don't, my wife's away in all these three or four days, and I get a download a whole ton of stuff. You want to see the stuff that the Lord showed me. What's this? There's another one. I only just say it here. Go on. Uh, I go you to First Timothy 3, verse 9. 1 Timothy 3, verse 9. Now listen, see all these Greek commentators. They'll just go over the schedule and listen, there's no really depth in my opinion. But I want to show you this one. First Timothy 3, verse 9. Holding the mystery of faith. What is the faith? The faith is an abyss that is the apostolic teaching handed down to the body of Christ to be for default. And it was handed down by the apostles of the church. Holding the mystery of the faith. Now the faith, the apostolic teaching is a mystery and it's hidden. But it only can be revealed by the wisdom of God. Now, have you ever seen that before? Holding the mystery of faith. Now, if I'm not going to preach on this, I'll maybe preach on next week. See the mystery of the faith. The mystery of the faith is maybe, the faith is mentioned maybe about 14 to 16 times. And this is what it's talking about. It's talking about the mystery of the faith. And that's a judge talking about. Contend for the faith. But do you ever think it was a mystery? It's the mystery of the faith. And it's hidden. And it's the apostolic teaching that was handed down to the body of Christ. But God hasn't left us here to try and work all this stuff up properly. Like, well, there's a very way on that. He says, no. But if God doesn't reveal it by grace to us, we'll never see that. Just want to pray. Father, we thank you for your word. And Father, see tonight, Father, maybe I've spoken a lot of things very deep. And I don't mean to distract or hurt the people. But Father, we just pray that you open our eyes to see these spiritual truths. And Father, help us to walk in these spiritual realities. I haven't even finished the take heeds there, Father. I only mentioned two of them. Matthew 20, 24, verse 4. Take heed to I my way is take heed to who you hear. Once take heed what you hear. Wants to get how you hear, wants to get who you hear. Malachi 2 2 16 says, Take heed to your spirit, make sure you have a humble, broken spirit. And another thing is Colossians 3 verse 4 verse 17, maybe. Take heed to your ministry, which you received in the Lord. Father, we just pray tonight. We pray, Lord, that we would remove the scales from off our eyes, the body of Christ. And Father, the things we're following, that the mysteries, that was handed down on the body of Christ or to walk in we pray, Lord, that the revelation of the mysteries of God will be manifest in the body of Christ and we would start to follow the revelations of the mysteries of God. And that the body of Christ will walk in the fullness and the power and the wisdom and principality would see the body of Christ for what they are and who they are. We thank you for this now. In the name of God, Jesus, amen.